Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Emily. And we're here with the Santa Barbara Middle School Teen Press with... Ken Burns. So you said that you made all of your films for your children. Can you expand on that? Well, I think in some ways I made them for myself, but I think in a larger sense, the films that you make, because they're history, also speak to our future. And the future, the most important future for me are my three daughters, and I now have a baby on the way, I just discovered, so my four children. And in some ways, I think, uh, Harry Truman said, the only thing that's really new is the history you don't know. And that means that if you don't know where you've been, you can't possibly know where you are or where you're going. So good history always ensures the future. And for me, the most important part of the future are my kids. Which of your films do each of your kids enjoy the most? Well, I, th I, I don't know. You'd have to ask them. They, they were, my older, two older daughters were sort of around from the very beginning, crawling under the editing tables and in the editing rooms. So I think they probably have a mixed relationship with all the films. Some of them, they're boring. They had to go to all those speeches that I gave when they were little and, and uh, all the screenings that they had to sit through and fall asleep at. Um, but I think, you know, I'm now working with my oldest daughter on a film about the Central Park jogger case. So I've got to assume that that's probably her favorite film, even though it's not done. How do you think YouTube is changing documentary filmmaking and viewing? Well, I think YouTube is, is both a good thing and a bad thing. That is to say, it's a good thing in that it democratizes things. We now have immediate access to tens of millions of new things funny, but they're essentially short things. And what they do is they begin to erode our attention span. And the, I would submit that the only thing we really have is our attention. That is to say, the work that you're proudest of, the relationships that you care about the most have benefited from your sustained attention but you know we live in a media environment where we surf the web which means we don't really get into one thing we surf it um, we text with our friends which is not real conversation uh, we watch TV which is interrupted every five or six minutes by you know uh, somebody trying to sell you five or six things and so we everything erodes our attention and I've consistently been on public television where there are no commercials and which the films are long and they are demanding and they're not for every Everybody and people get easily bored these days, and I don't care. I want people to realize that the things of value have benefited from our attention. So I think YouTube has some terrifically important things that far outweigh their deficits, but I think we have to be very careful about the way our attention is being eroded. We use iMovie a lot at school, and the Ken Burns effects is now a default setting for it. Why did you want us to make still photographs move? Well, you know, it's interesting. You use the word move. And when we think of move in many different de uh, definitions, don't we? Something moves physically, kinesthetically, and then we are moved by something emotional. So what I didn't like was all those history films that I saw that held those still photographs at arm's length, waiting until they could get to a newsreel, and then it would be, ah, something real. But what if you moved in on that? What if you treated a still photograph the way a feature filmmaker would a wide shot that had a medium shot, a close-up, a tilt, a pan, uh, a reveal, an insert of different information, and then you would add to it uh, not only a third-person narrator, but first-person voices, complicated sound effects. Are those uh, horses snorting? Are the, is the wagon wheels making a sound? Are the cannons firing? Are the troops tramping? You know, whatever it is. Is the bat cracking? Is the people in the stands cheering? All of those things to make it come alive, and then period music and, and other things. It was a way to will it alive. So when Apple did the thing called, as a joke, the Ken Burns effect, what they were saying is that it's better to give a kind of kinesthetic energy and motion to these pictures by being able to pan and zoom, but it's also good to make them come alive emotionally. And so I think that's what, what happens. Thank you. Not speaking of iMovie, but in a greater sense, what do you think or what do you want the Ken Burns to effect to be on the way we look at history? Well, I think, you know, for most people, the way they use the Ken Burns effect within their uh, Apple programs are to bring alive their own snapshots, their own weddings, the, you know, the, the celebrations of our lives, birthdays. In a way, that's local history. That's immediate and personal history. And the way I use it is in a larger and general sense, but that's okay too. There's no one that's more important. So I hope only that it just keeps people interested in collecting the artifacts of the past. Because right now in our digital age, we're very much consumers and we let things fall over and we don't make scrapbooks the way we used to that last forever. And I think some way that attention that we're giving to these photographs permits us to keep them alive. We met a guy named Tuan Luong. He was born in uh, Paris, 
to Vietnamese parents, got a degree in artificial intelligence, became a, an avid rock climber, and decided he wanted to continue rock climbing, and so he did his postgraduate work in California so he could be close to El Capitan in Yosemite. And he soon decided that he wanted to photograph in every national park, and so he set out to do it. And he takes these incredible photographs. This, the, this is uh, the first edition of the um, National Geographic Guide to the National Park. Um, um, and uh, so what I have is that uh, on, this, on, uh, on this first page here, I put a stamp for each of the parks that I, that I visited. Um, well, I, I visited uh, um, all of them so far, the, the 58, yes. Some of them, they are, they are somewhat faded. I photograph in all the 58 with my large format camera, and uh, I think I'm the only photographer to have, to have done so. So that's what I hope happens. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>